Namaste and welcome to day 23rd of 30 days of AppRight. Today we are going to introduce AppRight Cloud Functions and how it will help you to achieve various functionalities. Today will be introduction to Cloud Functions whereas for next two days we will implement Cloud Functions in our application to achieve various functionality. So what is Cloud Function? Cloud functions are way in order to execute custom code or run custom functions on AppRite server based on certain triggers. And AppRite cloud functions can be triggered by system events or predefined schedule or via HTTP request from our SDKs or even command line. What are the different available functions runtime in AppRite? So AppRite currently has 15 different active runtimes of 7 different languages including Node.js 14.5 and 15.5, PHP 7.4 and 8.0, Dart 2.10 and 2.12, Python 3.8 and 3.9, Ruby 2.7 and 3.0, .NET 3.1 and 5.0, Deno 1.5, 1.6 and 1.8 and more on its way. We try to support one of the latest and then stable one of the stable versions of every language that we support. If you find that new versions of any language have been launched like Dart 2.13 has been announced, you can notify us so that we will add the latest runtimes in the upcoming versions of AppRite. In order to activate any runtime, you need to pass the runtimes environment variable. So app functions runtimes environment variable where the values are currently 15 different values comma separated values. So providing all 15 values will activate all 15 functions. We'll see these in action in our next episode. What are the steps? generally involved in creating and running a cloud function in AppRite. The very first step is to create a function either in AppRite console or using our CLI or any server side SDK that you choose. Next, you need to write your functions code. So whatever you want to execute, you need to write it for the runtime of your choice. You can write code in any of the runtimes that are available like Node.js, PHP, Deno and each of those runtimes has a corresponding SDK for AppRite if you want to use or access AppRite, your AppRite project via Cloud Function. Then you need to deploy the code that you have written as a packaged tar.gz file or you can use CLI to simplify the deployment process. and you need to remember that dependencies has to be included in the runtime itself. For example, for NPM or Node.js, you have to include the Node modules folder as well. For Dart, you need to set the pop catch in the current folder and add those. So you can find this information also demos in our Cloud Functions demo repository in the official AppRite GitHub. Also, we'll see these in action in the next episode. Once the tag is deployed, we need to activate the tag. Then from settings in functions settings, we need to provide custom environment variables. If any that our code requires, then we need to select appropriate triggers or schedule or execute permission where triggers are to trigger a function based on any of the system events listed in the settings. Schedule is to execute a function on a regular schedule and execute permission is to permit the users to execute function via HTTP call or from your client applications. You can provide all these three values or only one of the value or even none of them where you can only trigger your HTTP functions via your server side SDK. Finally, you can test the function is doing correct thing by triggering or creating a trigger that your function runs on. So if your function run, runs on collection create trigger, you can just 
create a new collection to see your function in action out you can check the output right from the console you can check the logs of the execution finally you can get the result of execution by using get execution and providing the id of the execution and this is especially useful if you triggered your execution via http what are the available system triggers so all the different functions of app right trigger different events like accounts account service trigger account dot create accounts dot update dot email account dot update dot name account dot update dot password and all those events similarly database functions storage users teams have their own events and you can select any of those events to trigger the cloud function for example on account dot create we could activate a function or we could run a function that will automatically send welcome e emails to our users and we have that example in our cloud functions demo all the list of available events are can be found in the functions setting tab what are the default environment variables that are available during the execution of a function so while executing a function there are certain different default variables that are handy and that are available in each function execution first the function id the id of the unique function that is that is being executed function's name name of the function that is being executed function tag the id of the deployed or activated tag that is being executed trigger so what trigger the function this can be any of event http or schedule based on what trigger the function runtime name so name of the runtime for example it could be node js runtime version 14.5 and function event the exact event name and is only available if the function trigger is event so if a function is triggered by system event upright function event will consist of the name of the event for example account dot create upright function event data again this is only available if the trigger is event and this consists of any payload that the trigger consists so if an event is triggered by account dot create the function event data should consist uh, json data of the account upright function data custom execution data that is available if you have triggered your function via http request or from console and you can pass the custom data that will be accessible inside the function as a upright function data upright function user id again only available if triggered via http request by a user or user with active session from client sdks it will be the id of the user upright function jwt jwt of the user that executed the function so that you can perform any action on behalf of that particular user and finally project id the unique id of the project that is executing the function so these are the default environment variables apart from this you can pass your own custom environment variables from function setting and custom variables can be any key value pairs these environments are useful when you want to pass some configuration values to your cloud functions scheduling you can schedule upright functions using any valid cron syntax finally to learn more about cloud functions of upright you can head over to official cloud functions tutorial or official docs of functions and then you can also head over to official demos repository where you can find various examples in various different run times this is all for today i hope this session was useful and you got the overall introduction of upright functions in the upcoming episodes we will use this knowledge to implement a cloud function to add new functionalities to our application thank you see you again in the next episode